Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, we're doing an unboxing of Crossing the Line, Aiken 1944, second edition. This is from VUCA Simulations out of Germany. Germany, excuse me. Uh, Conflict Simulation Engineering. This is a new company for me. I had not heard of them, obviously, uh, you know, second edition, so it's been around a while. And I have to say, I'm so far just from the box, which I've not opened yet. It did not come shrink wrapped. It did come sealed with a couple of stickers, top and bottom. Just from the weight in this, I'm I'm very impressed. I'm impressed with the, the graphic design that's on here. I'm impressed by what I've seen on the back and the, the heftiness of it. So uh, they have a, the complexity of this one is rated slightly above a five, so medium complexity. And solitaire suitability is an eight, so it's pretty, pretty solo friendly. Uh, this is a battalion level game. Uh, turn is two to eight days, scales three fourths of a mile. There are four scenarios, including a campaign, and the playing time is 30 minutes to 10 hours. Cowabunga. Crossing the Line, Aiken, 1944, is an operational level simulation of the Battle for Aiken, which took place from September 12th to October 21st, 1944. The game is intended for two players, also suitable for solitaire and team play. The game is played in a semi-interactive way and keeps both players actively involved at all times. So let's crack it open and see what you get inside. Hey, if you're enjoying these videos, be sure to give us a like and a share. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. One ringy dingy. All right, so again, I told you it's very, very heavy. First thing as usual, we have a rule book. It is a kind of a glossy cover, kind of a, kind of a glossy stock. You see the light reflecting on it. It's not too terribly bad. It's not super shiny. And I guess it's got a little bit of a shine to it, so that may interfere a little bit. Um, it is a... Um, Scenarios are in here as well, and this is a one page, not 43, 44 page rule book counting the covers. Uh, full color. Here are your armored fighting vehicle types in the game. We got Shermans, Greyhounds, uh, M4 Shermans, M10 Wolverines, uh, Panthers, uh, Panzer Fours, Stug Threes, Stug Fours, Jag Panther, Jag Panther Four. Brumbar, Nashorn, and Tiger 2. Now, Brumbar and Nashorn, I've never seen in the game. I don't play a lot of armor games, but uh, those are new ones to me. Um, so it's full color. Um, very, very nice graphic design on here. Um, Hex terrain. Hex terrain indicates basic movement costs for leg and motorized units. It also defines a column of combat results tables. So the more obstructive terrain is, the more it benefits the defender. Well, that makes sense. So the rules go... Got zone of control. Uh, stacking limits. Each side may place the following in a single hex. One headquarter, two armored fighting vehicle, and one infantry. But nice graphic design again. Like I said, nice clear representations of what's going on here. Um, so let's see. I know I saw scenarios were in here. Do they have an index? That's usually the easiest way to go. Let's see. Yeah, we do have everyone. So 34, 34 pages of rules, 33 pages, I guess, of rules, and then page of victory condition, and then the four scenarios start on page 34. Let's jump ahead to those, take a look. Do, 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 do. There we go. Scenarios. Crossing the line comes with three small scenarios and one campaign. The initial deployment, reinforcements, and withdrawals can be found in the setup and reinforcements and withdrawals displays. You will find details regarding special conditions, victory conditions, in each scenario's instructions. Please note the special scenario rules include supersede all general rules of the game. All right, so scenario one. So you get a map. And apparently you have sections where the, where the scenarios get played. So you have a subsection of the map. Um, and, it, and it clearly defines what that is. So the, that's kind of nice how it's in, uh, 
in color here to show you where the battlefield takes place. Scenario two, it takes up a big chunk of the map. Scenario three takes up the opposite side of the map and the campaign takes up the whole map. So, and then we've got a few pages of designer notes by Dirk Blenemann. List of abbreviations, you got your glossary and combat multiplier chits, notes on those. And the glossary goes to the end and then your sequence of play on the back. So that's the rule book. Then we've got our map, and we will take a look at that shortly. Two dice, one black, one red. They work, and black and red tied. Go dogs. And then we've got our counter sheets. Let's pull those out here. A nice to please report these are pre-rounded counters. So they're easy to punch. They're pre-rounded. They look to be about uh, maybe six eighths of an inch. No, six eighths. No, maybe three fourths of an inch counters. They punch cleanly. They got little nubs on them, but they are bright and colorful. Very easy to distinguish. Kind of like uh, some of the World at War games uh, from Lock and Load. Very, very nice color bands at the top to tell you uh, what their units are, things like that. So, got uh, four, four counter sheets. And then we've got some markers here. Improved defense, so on and so forth. Got interdiction, various units. Game turn markers. Um, some other markers here. We've got Aiken, Pocket, R, Dummy, 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 Dummy. It's like Fred Sanford. You big dummy! And then uh, it looks like victory points, trackers, fives, fifteens, scenario victory points. Uh, then we got these. Got these markers, zero, one, two, three. This may be armor. Perhaps armor counters, you rotate them to count down because they start on seven and work their way down to zero. The, the sheets feel kind of flimsy. I mean, the, the sheet themselves, right? But then when you punch the counters out, they seem fine. So I'm not worried about it too much. And they go back in, and here are these uh, what did it call them? These are the combat multiplier chips. So that'd be interesting of how this plays in. And you also got this punched out combat results guide, right? You got the terrain type, and then you got the modified D roll of D10 roll of one through 20. So that's interesting how that's gonna work. Sounds like it's a, got a unique spin on combat, all right? Interesting to see how that plays out. And then we've got these uh, charts, and these are nice and thick. These are full chipboard. These are not uh, cardstock. So that's kind of interesting. We have Operation Charts A as your combat sequence, terrain effects chart, sequence of play, action points, uh, reactions. And then operations chart B also has another combat results table in DRM. General chart B. So he's gonna get a lot of use and they're, they look like they're set to take it. And then scenario one and three board setup. Here's the setup for scenario one. Tells you the hex, hexes these units are gonna be in. Scenario three, the hexes they're gonna be in. On the back, we've got reinforcements and withdrawals master chart and then campaign and scenario two board setup We've got the american forces and the german forces and on the side the reinforcements and withdrawal master chart per turn so you got your two master charts here maybe looks like yeah turn two put them together here and so we have two turn three turn three turn four fours, five, six, six, seven. 
So you get three of the, four of those charts. Very nice. That's why this thing's heavy. And then we also have our game turn tracker chart. This is only single sided, although it's pretty on the back. Uh, also thick, nice stock. Um, and this will, because obviously this can sit on the table during all the games, get your game turn. Running you of your ops and admin phases. There is no admin phase in the first game turn. And it takes you to the end. Your interdiction values, initiative DRMs, action points, different cores, and uh, I guess reinforcement tracks. All right, so here's a quick look at the board. And again, just like the rest of the uh, contents, I'm very impressed with the artwork and the design. It's a it's an eight panel map. Um, the panels do seem a little smaller than normal, but uh, that's good. I mean, I, you know, less table space for a full game is is nice. And as we saw, uh, scenario one is only going to take up you know a small section of play. Uh, it would have been nice, I guess, if uh, the board could have folded for that small scenario. And scenario two is going to take up this half, and then scenario three is going to take up this half, and the game main is going to take up this whole board. But, uh, so here's, here's the town of Aiken. Right here. And then you got all these little towns and hamlets and villages along the way. Alsdorf, Weisweiler, Oitweiler, Bettendorf, my ninth grade German coming back to me probably very poorly. I hope I'm not offending anyone. And then on one side you got your American Forces track, interdiction, initiative, DRM, turn tracker. So that's interesting. We have that turn tracker board. And your German Forces, formation, activation, action points. All these things are on that tracker board. So that's very interesting why they would include that if it's on this board. I don't know. That is a conundrum. But uh, so that is a top full view of the board. And let's recap everything that you get in the box. All right, so if you pick up a copy of Crossing the Line, Aiken 1944 from VUCA Simulations, you're going to get that very lovely map that we just took a look at. You're going to get the game turn tracking board. You're going to get four very thick, sturdy operational chart cards. You're going to get four sheets of counters, pre-rounded, which is very nice. Two dice. Oh, red one, that one. And a 44-page rule book. And that is everything that comes in this heavy, 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 beautiful box of Crossing the Line from VUCA Simulations. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!